Good evening. Welcome everybody to this ACS Deep Tech event. We'll be talking about two deep technologies, artificial intelligence and immersive realities. Uh, we'll be talking about a transformational shift in our relationship with technology and how we can best leverage the benefits while taking into consideration the risks. I would also like to thank Lenovo and Microsoft who are sponsoring this event. My name is Cameron Stevens, and I lead the augmented and virtual reality business for Lenovo here in Australia and New Zealand. Tonight, we are especially lucky to welcome a panel of three incredible AI and VR experts, including David Francis, Kate Armstrong-Smith, and Dr. Mahendra Samawarukwama. The agenda tonight uh, will be starting with a presentation from each of the individual speakers as it relates to AI and XR, followed by a fireside chat uh, with myself, and we'll finish off with audience Q&A. So let's get started. And we'll be moving on to uh, introducing uh, Dr. Mahendra, uh, who is the Data Science and Analytics Manager at Australian Red Cross, and is also ICT Professional of the Year at ACS Digital Disruptors Award. So congratulations, Dr. Mahendra, and we're very thankful to have you here. Um, so Dr. Mahendra is a highly accomplished leader, having an impressive track record of driving innovations, uh, technology innovations and transformation towards humanity, social justice and sustainability. He's extremely passionate about empowering people, innovations and creativity to enhance the businesses and customer experience. His experience spans across uh, conceptualizing, building and managing a variety of AI and data science teams, systems and processes. In the Australian Red Cross, he leads the AI and data science strategy while building capabilities for social justice and sustainability with diversity, equity and inclusion in AI and data science by mobilizing the power of humanity. Welcome, Dr. Mahendra. Thank you. Uh, so if you would like to describe um, what we're about to see of your content. Yeah, so today I'm presenting a video. Uh, the video is uh, designed by uh, uh, University of Sydney Computing and Audio Research Lab, where I did my PhD. Uh, that, re that particular video focusing very important aspect of the uh, virtual and augmented reality. If you, if you consider this technology, immersive technology, that's mainly visual, acoustic, and uh, intuitive interaction. Now, acoustic, uh, acoustic technology play a major role. Now, in, during my PhD, uh, I re my research mainly focused on uh, capturing uh, 3D sound scenes through a spherical microphone array and uh, transforming that into uh, a particular sound format called HOA encoding, which is, uh, which is the state-of-the-art method of capturing the sound scene. And then uh, that HOA enable reproducing of the sound, re like replay, playback, in any configuration of uh, loudspeaker or any other headset. Now, that's my research. And this research is actually focusing on this, the video what you now see is focusing on the reproduction of these uh, sound scenes through a v, like a uh, v, VR headset. Now, and they are focusing how head-related trans function should be incorporated uh, to this uh, immersive technology. Now, if you look into our that if you, if you talk about HRTF head related trans function, uh, that depending on your shape of the head and the ear. Now, when you uh, put in your VR headset, you effectively bypass most of these aspects and you are directly connect your uh, uh, speaker into your ear. And because of that, uh, we need to somehow reproduce this, uh, we need to generate this head, your head, head and the ear uh, related uh, characteristics into the sound. And that's a very complex process and complex. And, the, and when you look into, the, into this video, what I want to show is like how Australia is contributing to this uh, very important uh, uh, 
uh, technology. This is over two decades of uh, research of uh, University of Sydney Computing and uh, Computing and Acoustic Lab. Uh, Professor Craig Jean, director of the lab, is doing this research quite like two over two decades. And uh, PhD students Nadim Hussein actually presenting this video. Let's listen to that. Great. Can you share the video, please? Hi, I'm Shai Hussain, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Sydney. And today, I'll be briefly but swiftly walking you through my project, which focuses on individualizing head-related transfer functions, or HRTFs, through photogrammetry. This is motivated by the rising industrial interest towards AR and VR, for which true individualized 3D audio is key to an immersive experience. The photogrammetry rig consists of 10 aluminium poles and 46 DSLR cameras. 41 are mounted at three different heights on the poles, the lowest being at eye level of a sitting subject, and five are positioned directly overhead looking down. White sheets drape around the poles, which provide a uniform soft lighting condition inside the rig. The subject wears a patterned shirt, a patterned wig cap, and a dotted pattern is painted on the ears. This is to ensure an even distribution of features across the torso, head and ears and is crucial to accurate surface reconstruction of the mesh. The subject sits still with their eyes closed. The remote camera trigger is pressed, causing all 46 cameras to fire at once and save an image each, a total of 46 images for the head and torso. A person's HRTFs are influenced by their morphology, but most significantly by the shape and features of the ears, and hence, these need to be recorded close up with high resolution. We use an iPhone 12 Pro Max to record videos of each ear at 4K60. The software we use to reconstruct our 3D models is 3DF Zephyr from 3D Flow. It intelligently stitches adjacent images together to produce a mesh. For the head torso model, it can work directly on the DSLR still images. For the ear models, though, we set Zephyr to extract three still frames per second from the ear videos, which ensures sufficient overlap between frames. The resulting meshes need to be touched up, trimmed, and refined. We do this using a combination of mesh lab and geomagic wrap. The most vital step is merging the separate head, torso, and ear meshes accurately. This is executed using the manual registration function in geomagic wrap. After some final refinement, the mesh is now ready to be run through acoustics for a BEM simulation. BEM simulation on the mesh produces the individualized HRTF for that subject. Now, it is time to enjoy some virtual reality with authentic 3D audio. We are developing a mobile app that provides your HRTFs in no time directly from a quick video of your ears. Fully funded PhD scholarships and postdoc positions are open right now at our lab. Hop on board if you're interested. Thanks, Dr. Mahendra. And uh, I guess that kind of leads into a little bit about ethics um, in a way. And perhaps, Dr. Mahendra, you could talk to us as an AI ethicist, ultimately, um, what some of your views are around biases and, and some of the ethics considerations, particularly around AI, but possibly also around some of VR experiences, but maybe more of a focus on your, your background with AI. Uh, what, what are some of the, the key ethics considerations we need to take into play? Yes, that uh, the immersive experience, augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, more focused on uh, entertainment, perhaps. Now, one of the uh, ethical 
uh, motivation might be like how we can use this uh, great technology for sustainability. Uh, we can have a look uh, sustainable development goals, United Nations sustainable development goals, and we can look how uh, this a virtual reality, augmented reality can be used in education. Uh, because uh, quality education is one of the key sustainable development goal uh, and augmented reality is giving a like great support in that perspective and also health and well-being the health sector which will get quite a lot of uh, support from uh, augmented reality and virtual reality uh, it can be surgical procedures it can be uh, and for treatment for anxiety uh, and uh, supporting for seniors and and a great technology for people who having certain different ab ab abilities uh, and uh, it enhanced the accessibility of uh, resources. So uh, that is quite effective. And also uh, the 17 sustainable development goals is about how people can uh, work as a distributed network uh, and how to support partnerships and collaboration. Now, this metaverse actually completely talking about that perspective, how to work as a distributed network, but in a in a same digital space. So, so it's a great technology for supporting sustainability. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for some of the uh, areas like human international humanitarian law. Uh, we know that, for example, Red Cross uh, emblem is the meaning of the Red Cross emblem is uh, do not shoot. That in a conflict or uh, in a conflict uh, situation, uh, this should be clearly visible. Now, based on past experience, we know a lot of people, Red Cross, Red Cross personnel, uh, dead or kidnapped because of this uh, emblem is not identified. Or, uh, or not visible clearly. Now we know in uh, in uh, international coalitions and then uh, in some of the militaries and for defense use these uh, AR and VR glasses, and this is a great opportunity that uh, that for innovation as an innovation like how this Red Cross emblem can be communicated effectively. In a, in a for situational awareness in conflict and uh, conflict uh, zones. Uh, and th those are like some of the interesting uh, areas that, uh, uh, that this technology can support uh, sustainability. And also, I believe in the diversity, equity, inclusion perspective, uh, this technology enable a uh, lot of uh, like bringing true globalization right bringing a uh, uh, lot of uh, people into one uh, one digital space and bringing diversity equity inclusion uh, to certain uh, communities so it's a great technology so just on the um, on the risk side of those opportunities what what then do you believe is the number one risk we need to be concerned about as it relates to AI becoming more pervasive across uh, society in general? Uh, there are quite a lot of risks uh, in this space. Uh, the first risk is like uh, the privacy, like uh, how, uh, how we, how we, what is the, how we govern the data privacy and security. Uh, in related to this technology uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, touch points sensors that capturing uh, data and these need to be regulated uh, while the technology is evolving that's one aspect uh, at the same time we don't know how uh, augmented reality or virtual reality impact uh, our psychology uh, in long term because we know in in health uh, that VR technology is used for treating anxieties and uh, stress-related uh, issues, 
at the same time in the other side is like in the other way that this can also impact uh, negatively on a, in a long term like the, the research need to that means certain research need to be done to understand uh, that what is the cognitive impact which we might uh, get from this this kind of new technology mm. then uh, then i think that's the health and privacy i think you did a good job at answering one of those um, and then added a couple of extras so um, so shifting back again then to something probably more consumer focused and just our everyday lives and households um, and I picked up a comment that you said before about TikTok. So I am going to ask you, Kate, but I also want your, your opinion on this as well, Dr. Mahendra. Um, what do you think the barriers are um, uh, that makes VR and AR technologies from being more adopted in the household? Thoughts, Dr. Mahendra? Yeah, I think the technology is progressing in the right direction, like it is seamless, ubiquitous, and that is the main, uh, like, objective like technology is evolving for example uh, 5g the iot that kind of technologies are more supportive with uh, augmented reality and virtual reality and they are also evolve in parallel which is a good good thing and also uh, if you focused uh, uh, intuitive interactions component which is like one dimension of this vr and ar uh, that natural natural uh, user interfaces are now quite uh, evolving at this stage because if you are going to use it household uh, there is really it should be really user friendly that uh, uh, like very effective the user usability perspective and and technology is developing in right direction now certain organizations look into uh, like natural like developing nat these natural user interfaces and then the contextual uh, awareness uh, which are very important this uh, uh, interact with the technology uh, intuitive interaction which is very low friction uh, so these are very important and 5g is coming and then <laughs> it is easy to uh, like edge computing uh, and they are very important aspects when using the uh, uh, virtual reality, like augmented reality applications. Mm. So these are the ap aspects that currently in progress. And I think at the end uh, that people will use these technologies uh, as a household. It's not far away. Great. Now, and look, we're, we're out of time. So one last question to, to wrap everything together. And the question is actually uh, for emerging professionals that are, you know, in the ACS looking to, to get into this space, emerging tech, uh, AR and VR, AI, that hybrid intersection of the cutting edge of these solutions, um, how does someone get a foot in the door? A 10 second response from Dr. Mahendra. I'm sure it's something to do with the University of Technology, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, now, uh, learning the and having awareness of these technologies and how, what these technologies can be done to humanity uh, is a very good starting point. Uh, it is more general, general perspective, and then gradually look into other areas. So, so awareness and hu and looking the technology through the lens of ethics uh, and the sustainability, and it will be more easy for anyone to grasp this, uh, the why we are looking into uh, these technologies. Thank you very much. Great. And I'll add one last point to that is connect, I can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm sure you can connect with any of the folks here. Uh, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions uh, about getting into the profession. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much to Dr. Mahendra, Kate and David for joining us and their, sharing their expertise. Thank you so much to Lenovo and Microsoft for sponsoring the event and to the ACS. Thanks for joining us. See you later.